Huh, the more I read about this Heliod fellow, the less I like him. Hmm. Ugh, what the? No secret layer alert. Ugh, this is not the fine Ravnican coffee I'm used to. Has someone switched my blend with those Ikorian pellets again? No yeah. secret layer alert! No secret layer what? alert! What? what the? No secret layer alert! No secret layer alert! No secret layer alert! Wait a minute. No secret layer alert! No secret layer alert! No secret layer alert! People screaming at me and I'm all out of money? It can only mean one thing! No secret layer alert! All right, so we have over half a dozen secret layers to get through, including one that is going to be shipping with an incomplete artwork card. Very interesting, cannot wait to dive into that financial analysis. As always, I'll be focusing on the financial value of the cards contained within secret layers. If you were to purchase the cheapest available version of each of these cards, regardless of treatment or artwork, just how much would you have to spend versus how much are they charging for the secret layer? There are many other factors Actors. Heck, they might even have one that's got cards for a commander deck with artwork you love or a commander itself, and there's nothing wrong with that. We just want to focus on the financial here. There's actually a lot of these cards that are only played in commander. It's like we're not exactly getting modern reprints here. It's Commander the Gathering. Speaking of commander, Command Fest is coming to Orlando, Florida this June 16th through the 18th, and I'll be there. Come play commander against me, the professor. Command Fest is an awesome weekend long celebration of all things Commander. Not only do you get to play Commander against friends new and old, or maybe content creators such as myself and many others, but there's going to be tons of Magic the Gathering artists there like Howard Lyon, John Stanko, Andre Garcia, Elena Danner, one of my favorites, Ben Hill, and many more to come. Not to mention a huge prize wall with oversized cards and uncut sheets. Remind yourself to explain the cards by reading them with these cool tokens and playmat. And there's even unique events like Collector Booster Sealed. So come to Command Fest in Orlando and maybe you'll get to play some Commander with me. I'm bringing, you know, just a, just a few of my decks. I got my Brian Stout Arm deck. I got my Slivers deck. I got my Taysa Combo deck. I got my John Arenicus deck. I got my Thrun Voltron deck. Well, well, there's there's other creators you might want to play play against too if you don't like the sound of playing those decks. Look at all these cool people. The nitpicking nerds are gonna be there. MTG Nerd Girl, wow! My former student, Krim, the Asian Avenger. He's come a long way since being enrolled in one of my actual community college classes 10 years ago. Even Jim Davis, the creator of Garfield Comics, is going to be there. He may hate Mondays, but he loves Commander. I think he plays on the Pro Tour, too. An entire festival dedicated to Commander? I can't wait, and I hope very much to see you at Command Fest Orlando, June 16th through the 18th. All right, time to dive into these secret layers. Fire them up! Contained within the Spring 2023 Super Drop are three secret layers dedicated solely to the set March of the Machine, and dedicated to the overall multiversal impact of the Phyrexian invasion. All three of these layers include five different art treatments from across past and future Magic the Gathering sets, and all three of these layers also come in foil-only treatments, further emphasizing the grandiose nature of this intergalactic war. Let's jump right into showcase Mom, Volume 1, and see what planes we'll be visiting with these selects. Starting with New Capenna, we have Wheel and Deal, a niche card that exclusively benefits commanders who want to make their opponents draw as many cards as possible. As you'll see in a moment, Wheel and Deal also takes the prize as the most expensive foil of the set at $34. Moving on to the plane of Eldraine, we have Questing Beast, a card famous for its slew of keywords and abilities. It too sees mostly commander play, but does have some utility as a one-of in some legacy lists. Plane shifting to Innistrad, we have Olivia Voldaren, an absolute commander favorite, giving vampire decks an evasive flyer with removal and mind control. 
while Kaladesh will bring us a walking ballista, a card that sees what's this play in a format outside of Commander? Whoa! This is a tremendous all-star of modern Tron, and is also a notorious game-ending combo piece with Heliod's Sun Crowned. Finally, on Kaldheim, the World Tree is an excellent card, considered by many Commander players, to simply be an auto-include in any five-color deck, regardless of god-creature synergy or not. The total value to buy each of these cards in foil at the lowest possible price would come to $88.82. While I am disappointed that this secret layer is $49.99 instead of the $39.99 that foil secret layers generally run, there's still a solid value here. And of course, if you like these art styles and play these cards, then you're going to find this to be a very good secret layer indeed, and thus the grade is a B. Solid cards, solid selection, solid value. Moving along to Showcase Volume 2 from March of the Machine, we continue our trek across the multiverse, starting with Higure the Still Wind from Kamigawa. The Still Wind is one of the ultimate ninja cards, and absurdly, it not only tutors ninjas, but makes them unblockable as well. Notably, this card has only one foil printing from original Kamigawa, and that foil printing is currently priced at $122. Whoa, pretty nice to get a foil option of it here, don't you think? Moving along to Ixalan, we find Nezahal, Primal Tide, which serves as a fairly strong and reliable top end for blue commander decks. And since this is the Ixalan treatment, we get that wonderful gold coin engraving, which I must admit is a favorite of mine. Tarkir is represented by Dragon Lord Culligan, a powerful inclusion in many dragon and non-dragon commander decks alike, as it grants our entire board of creatures haste. Mina and Den see us return to Zendikar, and these Wildborn have a vital role in landfall decks, granting us more landfall triggers as well as trample access. Finally, representing Dominaria, no, wait a minute, that's a Phyrexian sleeper agent. It's Sancha, a really, really cool character from the old lore, and also a really, really cool group slug commander. Total value here is inflated dramatically by Higure the Still Wind. And I do like to remind everyone that foils such as this have an artificially inflated price due to simply not being available anywhere but in an old set. As is typically the case when they get reprinted, the foil value drops. And looking at the foil value of the remaining cards, we see that they're more in line with the prior secret layer. So despite the fact that the total value technically is $157 and change, I don't think this is that different than volume one. And I'm gonna keep it at a B, a solid B. If you wanna add a plus to this because of the still wind only having that one foil printing, go ahead. But I try not to be too wowed by that price. Our third and final volume for Showcase March of the Machine brings us another five cards, another five planes, and another five art treatments. And from the mystical archives of Strixhaven, we have Misdirection. Misdirection is a highly effective form of interaction for many blue decks, and it is actually the only card on this list that sees non-commander play, albeit only in a handful of legacy lists. The citywide plane of Ravnica is represented by Utvara Hellkite, who is simply a must-have for any and all dragon and chain decks, and with its only foil printing at $61, it is also the financial select for this layer. Ikoria is represented next by Kogla, the Titan Ape, a card that has been extremely budget for a while, really a disappointing inclusion. Foil versions of this can be gotten for 75 cents. Fortunately, it is a quite playable and effective card in practice, so at the very least, it's likely to go in your decks or make for a good trade for someone who runs it. With Theros, we look to the stars with Nyx Bloom Ancient the infamous, coveted, and back-breaking mana tripler that makes a single soul ring tap for six colorless. In either non-foil or foil, this is still a $20 card and a great inclusion here. Finally, our real Dominaria representative is Joyra, Weatherlight Captain, a beloved combo commander for Izzet, Spellslinger, and Artifact players. Joyra is also known to sit comfortably in the 99 of such archetypes. As you can see, while each of these, except for Kogla the Titan Ape, have a pretty solid foil printing value, that $110 price is inflated by the Hellkites, only having one foil printing. I know it's boring and repetitive at this point, but I still just can't see past giving this a B. Again, that is not a bad grade. There is solid card selection and solid value here, but I just wish they had kept this at $39.99, which would have resulted in an easy B plus across the board, or maybe have included some more solid value in addition to these one of foil printings to really make this an A grade drop. 
shop, which they did not. The next three secret layers for the Spring Super Drop on this list are greatly appreciated artist series layers, with the first featuring one of my absolute favorites working today in magic, Alina Danner, who has elegantly depicted a selection of mono-white angelic-themed cards for this collection. I really wish they had hired her to do five cards, but it seems that artist series drops have been relegated to four-card territory, a huge bummer for me as I would have loved a fifth piece. Nonetheless, there's a couple real heavy hitters here, starting with Linvala, Keeper of Silence, an angel who finds play in many control and tempo decks as a spectacular, evasive stacks piece. The drop also comes with Ameria, the Sky Ruin, a card that slots immediately into any mono-white commander deck that has a creature-based strategy, as it allows us to revive creatures every upkeep as long as we control seven or more planes. These two cards alone run a respectable $17 and $19 in non-foil, with their cheapest foil printings being $66 and $54. Oh my goodness, this is what a secret layer should be in terms of value. Obviously, I love the art. Oh wait, there's two more cards. What are they? Oh no. Look, they're beautiful, okay? I love Danner's artwork. They're beautiful, but Sunblast Angel and Seraph Sanctuary just do not pack much of a financial wallop. At 26 cents and 59 cents respectively, these two cards are going to drag down the value of the layer. It should also be noted that there was a mistake with the artwork used for Seraph Sanctuary. In progress or otherwise incomplete artwork was used for the Seraph Sanctuary, and this mistake was not caught in time. In other words, if you do buy this secret layer, you will receive a Seraph Sanctuary that features the in progress or otherwise incomplete art. Wizards of the Coast has already stated that they plan to release a version of Seraph Sanctuary featuring the completed artwork, but that this will likely be as a bonus card in a future secret layer. While I understand the logistics of this are difficult, I can't help but find it disappointing that they can't somehow assure that those who buy this secret layer drop will receive the correct version of this card with the correct artwork at a future date. Now, I actually think the in-progress artwork has a sort of charm to it, but again, I've admitted I'm a huge fan of Danner's work. I'd probably buy a secret layer of hers if it was just doodles she made on cocktail napkins. The completed art is also gorgeous. I hope at least Wizards of the Coast is transparent about how we can obtain it and isn't going to just randomly drop it in as a surprise in future secret layers because I want to make sure I get it. It is worth noting that Seraph Sanctuary is a card that only has one foil printing, and thus, while it's 59 cents in non-foil, it'll set you back $15 in foil, giving us a bit of a lopsided value in terms of the secret layer, with the total cost to buy these cards in non-foil being $37.95, and the foil value $136.69. Insert two obligatory statements here, the first being that if you love an artist and their work, that in itself is a value to buy beyond financial, and that had they possibly commissioned a fifth piece from this artist, that fifth piece could have helped to add value. As it stands, I'm going to give the non-foil version a C and the foil version a B. Again, this grade only reflects the financial value at the price of $29.99 for non-foil and $39.99 for foil. As a fan of Danner myself, it's a secret layer I am personally picking up. And hopefully this breakdown has helped you determine if this secret layer is worth it, given your needs as a player or collector. Next in the Spring Artist series is Randy Vargas. The cards in Vargas's collection don't seem to have a connecting theme or through line. However, the cards are still flavorful, fun, and best of all, iconic. Like the previous Danner Secret Lair, there are only four cards here, and like the previous Danner Secret Lair, I'd say two of them are home runs, and the other two, well, selfless saviors, only 22 cents. It's a precious puppy pick that can protect our important creatures, but even in foil, it's only a buck and change. A chroma Angel of Fury has never been a particularly desirable card, and unfortunately, even the average Kylea deck is interested in far more utility and power for their attack triggers. This leaves her at only 88 cents in non-foil and just under $3 in foil. But there's two really nice inclusions here, not the least of which is Grand Abolisher, a two-drop human that is quintessential to any white combo deck looking to safely secure their victory. Grand Abolisher has also only seen one foil printing thus far, and that foil printing 
printing is, of course, the most expensive card mentioned in the entire list, running an astonishing $147. Finally, we have a card that isn't just playable in Commander, but sees play in Legacy. And it's one of the best equipment cards in the game, Umazawa's Jite. I love this new art depicting Umazawa himself. But I don't love that this appears to be another lopsided artist series secret layer, with the total value in non-foil only coming to $38.94. The total foil value is, again, greatly inflated by Grand Abolisher's $147 price, where you can see just a buck thirty-five, $2.93, and the respectable $13.60 for Selfless Savior, Acroma, and Jite. I feel like a broken record here, but this is another one where the non-foil is a C and the foil is a B. Let's see if the next artist series can break this trend. Rounding out the Spring Artist Series, we have none other than Rebecca Gay herself. One of the most beloved, famous, and distinct Magic the Gathering artists, Gay brings her unique and chic style to these next four cards. Starting with Cleansing Nova, a perfectly reasonable if not slightly underwhelming board wipe. Thanks to tons of reprints, Nova is also far away the cheapest inclusion in this layer, with a value of only 45 cents in non-foil and three bucks in change in foil. Gay also brings her distinctive style to Sarah the Benevolent, a card that is the de facto Angel Planeswalker for just about any and all Angel Commander decks. With only one Modern Horizons foil printing, her foil also holds the premium in this layer at $55. Cool shades, Sarah. When are we getting Sarah's sunglasses to go along with Urza? This layer also includes the modern legacy and commander staple Stoneforge Mystic. Talk about a stellar inclusion. Mystic has a major role in modern's Hammer Time, Legacy's Death and Taxes, and just about any commander deck focused on equipment. And at over $30 for both existing foil and non-foil versions, despite the fact this has seen several reprints, Stoneforge Mystic holds true value and is precisely the kind of reprint we're hoping to see in a secret layer. Last, we have Muddle the Mixture, a very solid interaction piece that if not used to counter our opponent's spell, can always be transmuted to tutor our favorite wind con or stacks piece. Total value here is $53.99 in non-foil, which I wish were higher, and $137.77 in foil. I really wish somebody had taken Rebecca Gay aside and said, not Cleansing Nova. Or if Cleansing Nova was assigned to Gay, then whoever assigned it had been taken aside and said, hey, give her something better than Cleansing Nova. I just can't give the non-foil version of this anything higher than a B-, minus, though I I will give a solid B to the foil version. Yet looking back at all these secret layers so far, I can't help but feel overall an underwhelming sense of card selections. There's been some real heavy hitters, but I hate this trend of diluting them with 50 cent reprint inclusions. Let's see if our next two change the pattern at all. This next layer is the perfect collection for fans of green mana, and for fans of all things adorable, or just fans of artist Aya Kikita. Its nature is adorable. It might as well be an artist series, and it contains a collection of nurturely nature commander cards, starting with Jiraga Tree Speaker, an underplayed level up elf ball card capable of explosive mana production. Tree Speaker has only had one foil printing. I'm detecting a trend. It's only two bucks in non foil, but in foil, it's 39.10. Nature's Will is a a great inclusion, it too only has one foil printing, making that copy a $69 card. In non-foil, it carries good value at $13 and change, and it's no wonder as this card is a pseudo-mana doubler, untapping our lands whenever we achieve combat damage. Uvenwald Tracker is invaluable in any fight-themed deck. While not pricey, it's not a bad card, and having a repeatable source of this effect can be highly effective for green creature decks in general. Finally, Yiva, Nature's Herald, is old-school commander tech that remains evergreen to this day, as being able to cast our green creatures at instant speed is simply a massive buff that ultimately makes our game plan far less vulnerable. But the total value of this secret layer absolutely tanks. It's only 20 bucks. Sorry, I'm gonna have to give that a D- minus for do not buy. In true lopsided fashion, it's $118 for the foil version. Again, that's because Tree Speaker and Nature's Will only have one foil printing each. I'm not too impressed with this selection or or the falsity of this value, so it's a B minus in foil. Maybe if there had been a fifth card, as there should always be, and if that fifth card had had some real value in non foil and foil, this could have been a better overall layer. 
Last but certainly not least, it's time to drop on the deck and flop like a fish for completing the 2023 Spring Super Drop, it's Cool Ocean Breeze, a collection of four deep sea themed creature cards. Is this finally secret layer merfolk? It almost feels that way, but it also almost feels like this is yet another pseudo artist series and regrettably only has four cards. Cephalid Empress is not particularly popular or coveted in Commander, but I've always felt it's an interesting way to play control when combined with cards that tinker with color identity like Shifting Sky. It's one dollar in non-foil, oh dear. Yet, because there's only been one foil printing of it, that foil will cost you upwards of $40. Next up is the totally tubular Master of Waves. It's seen a tremendous number of printings, and thus the only value here is your appreciation of the new art. Thassa Deep Dwelling is a very refreshing sight as a card that maintains a moderate price in foil and non-foil. That value is no doubt in part to the fact that this card has a tremendous utility in any blue deck with power Powerful enter the battlefield triggers. And speaking of Thassa, last but not least, we have one of the most controversial magic cards of all, Thassa's Oracle. With a handful of commander players fervent in their opinion that Thassa's Oracle is ban worthy, it is nonetheless one of the best, most efficient win conditions ever printed, and there's simply no reason to expect a ban anytime in the foreseeable future. Thassa's Oracle is actually so powerful, it's managed to find recent play in Legacy as a part of a deck known as Cephalid Breakfast, not to mention other Legacy and vintage doomsday piles. Total value to buy all four of these cards in non-foil is $31.27. Very disappointing considering the price of this secret layer is $29.99 in non-foil. You've only got $77.11 in foil as well. And while I hate to say it, I think the majority of people are literally just going to buy this secret layer to get Thassa's Oracle. Master of Waves is only relevant to people like me who play Merfolk. There are dozens of us. Cephalid Empress is only here because it's never been reprinted in foil, I guess. And so it's another split down the middle secret layer with the grade being a C minus and B minus respectively. That being said, while I know art is subjective, for me personally, this artwork for Thassa's Oracle might be some of the most amazing Magic the Gathering art I've ever seen. The question is, does that alone make this worth it to buy? The answer will vary depending on you, the customer. Now remember, I gave a very long talk about my thoughts on secret layers in the video here, where I outlined many of the improvements that have been made to them since the series was first introduced, but I still wish we were seeing a better selection of value. Most secret layers seem to have one to two really heavy hitter cards and then a bunch of low value cards to pad them out. And I don't like that, nor do I like this trend of the first time in foil cards bearing the load of most of the value in each secret layer. Now don't get me wrong, having a card that is for the first time in foil or has only once appeared in foil being reprinted in a secret layer is a good use of secret layers. But when that card's non-foil version is 50 cents, there needs to be other value in the layer. You can't say, look, there it is. This old Kamigawa card that nobody really wants has a really expensive foil because it's never appeared in foil since. You gotta have a better distribution in my opinion. But now I want to hear from you. Which of these secret layers do you like? Which do you not like? Why? Let me know in the comments. And what do you think a secret layer needs to contain in order to be a home run? And remember that you can come join me and play Commander at Command Fest Orlando this June 16th through the 18th. Special packages will include tokens of me, the professor, and even a playmat reminding you to read the card, thus explaining the card. So come join me and many of your favorite content creators and Magic the Gathering artists for a weekend that is sure to prove the gathering is truly what makes magic, magic. Also, maybe you get to go up against my John Arenicus deck. <laughs> Ah. Uh. The season finale of Shuffle Up and Play. Secret Commanders. Each of my guests has brought a commander deck, but none of us know, and we will not know, until we cast that commander during the game for the first time. Legitimately looks like a Yu-Gi-Oh board. Like, <laughs> yeah, we brought Face down, card side. <laughs> it's all very down. clean. This yeah. Persecutor. This is a 6-6 six, six flying trample. Uh -huh. You can't win the game and your opponents can't lose the game. Sovereigns in the skies. Sovereigns in the you, skies. Now you got it. Let me take my mic off. I think I need, <laughs> need to get It's called Liar's Pendulum for one mana. Oh, no. 
I told you, I brought riddles. That's absurd. Yeah, I, yeah, I feel so. like I'm trapped in an Escher painting. <laughs> in that case, feast your eyes on. <laughs> no.